Good morning. Today is Friday, December the 16th. The time right now in Hong Kong is 9.50 in the morning. And uh, overnight, we have uh, quite a big move on Wall Street. We have seen a continuous uh, pullback uh, after setting a two months high. In fact, uh, this is not only a two months high, it's the highest since uh, April of this year. So we can see that from a low of 28,660, the market has, has rallied aggressively to three. Uh, 34,700 levels. And can we see that this is actually uh, within a very short span of time. We are talking about uh, mid-October to uh, to mid-December. So we can see that within this two months period, the market has actually rallied more than 6,000 points. I'm not using 6,000, but 4,000, uh, 6,000 points. Okay. So this is very, very aggressive uh, in terms of uh, magnitude of a move. Okay. So, but so that gives rise to the idea that a lot of people saying, oh, the bear market is over and now we should be looking for a bull market. So uh, I think basically after this week, I think the market will have to change their view again. Uh, lastly, this week, the major highlight has been the CPI numbers. Uh, we have seen the release of the US CPI numbers. Re uh, obviously seeing very uh, gradual uh, climb down in the US inflation based on the headline numbers in the CPI from 9.1% in uh, in June. Now we are looking at 7 odd percent, just barely above 7%. So we can see that the market is actually coming off in terms of inflation. So that gives rise to the idea that maybe the Federal Reserve can take its foot off the pedal and do not have to aggressively rate, uh, hike rates. So the market is talking, has been thinking about pivoting. For some reason, the market is always thinking about pivoting, whereas the Fed chairman has clearly tell us that interest rate is likely to stay higher and longer and since uh wednesday after the latest uh, the last FOMC meeting for this year uh, in which the Federal Reserve high interest rate by 0.5% he has also mentioned that throughout 2023 there will be no chance of a pivot uh, he will likely slow down the rate of the uh, rate hike but essentially rates are still going to go up okay so that caused the market to pull back on wednesday and last night uh, uh we have a killer of a retail sales the market was expecting retail sales to slow down to negative 0.1 percent but it came in negative 0.6 so that was a whammer going into the festive season okay this is a big big uh, uh uh sign that the u.s economy is definitely in the beginning of a grip of a potential recession so yesterday we can see that uh wall street actually went down rather ag aggressively so Dow Jones high at 34,712 could be the peak for this round and going forward we should be looking at much much lower levels uh, in fact the, the whole bear market is never has never been over so possibly going into 2023 we can see uh, the resumption of the bear trend okay over in the S&P 500 we saw the similar move but this time we can see that the market has taken out a key uh, medium um, mid-term like uh, uh, that that support line okay so coupled with the fact the market hit a high of a very round number at 4100 and then break the support line last night and uh, we can see that this move itself has caused the market right now to, to be trading uh below the so far the december this is the lowest it ever been in december so uh as we go forward towards the end of the year definitely we're going to see much much lower prices i am uh, already short the s p 500 so i'm basically hanging on for dear life because at one stage when the market was going up to 400 uh, 4100 i was thinking maybe at some stage my short position will not survive because i placed my stop just above the 41 uh 4120 levels just above the september high okay uh over in Nasdaq, we also saw that uh the as much as the dow jones and s&p 500 has been aggressively been uh rising especially the dow jones uh the Nasdaq 100 obviously did not match the kind of uh, uh magnitude of a rise okay so Throughout this two months period, the rise in the Nasdaq 100 has been very, very shallow. It was a three wave rebound, uh, which I think may have already picked at 12,166. And last night it broke the support line. And I think there's very, very, very good chance uh, the Nasdaq 100 will be the first among the three major uh, equity index 
uh, in the US to actually take out the yellow going forward. It may not have enough time to do it this year, but uh, we still have about two weeks before the year end. Anything can happen. If this NASDAQ close the year, anywhere near the year low, I think it's setting the stage for a resumption of the bear trend that we have seen in NASDAQ this year. Okay. Now over in Hong Kong, we can see that the market has not reacted any uh, uh, violently yet. The market has eased off uh, a little bit from where it closes uh, uh, yesterday, but not by very, very much. But still, we can see that this is a three wave rally. Uh, it came very, very close to 20,000 levels, but it didn't quite make it. Uh, I think all the while that the, the August high at 20,283 is going to be a barrier to entry. Uh, so if the market going forward breaks this uh, near-term support line, it will actually mimic what we see in Wall Street. Uh, the one in Shanghai, this is the Shanghai Composite Index. Uh, while this market also have a rebound in three way, but this three does not look complete in my opinion. Uh, certainly, you know, there is still the outside chance that the market may actually go towards my target at 3300 okay uh, if that's the case i think uh that would be great because you know uh, the overall bear market in shanghai is definitely uh does not seem to be over uh but in the meantime if the market first break the support line then of course uh, the chance of the market going to 3300 may actually be reduced dramatically okay so overall the bear market in equities is definitely not over we can see that also in the nikkei 225 this morning we have a major gap down market opens and gap down and it's already challenging the last week's low at 27,415 so going forward I think there's a very good chance this week or rather today uh, the market may actually take out this level of 27,415 okay and then that will set the stage for much lower prices going into the new week over in currencies we can see that the dollar was relatively strong uh, dollar yen this round uh, managed to hold out at 133.62 and we can see the market is attempting to rebound and last time we can see a very very large move uh, to all the way to 138 and then the market now is easing back a little bit but by and large i think the dollar strength is going to be very evident because the federal reserve chairman already said interest rate is not going to be cut in 2023 and uh, uh, he's still looking to uh, progressively high interest rates so that means interest rate in the u.s is still going to go higher uh maybe not as high as what we saw over the last four uh installment of the federal reserve uh, rate high of 75 basis point but still the dollar is likely to benefit from higher interest rates so going long dollar has always been uh uh is 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 the yeah uh, it's the main theme this year and i think it was cool also be the main team next year okay so it means that conversely all other currency will have to fall uh, relative to the us dollar so the fed the the, the sterling has uh, managed to climb up to all the way to 124.45 okay it's already quite remarkable i was actually short the sterling going into the cpi numbers unfortunately that trade did not survive and last night dropped uh basically confirms what i what i suspect that uh, maybe the market is already coming to a top and the high at 124.46 is possibly the peak for this round uh, because it also breaks a minor support line and uh, it does give the uh, bearish view that much more uh, credibility. Uh, over in the euro versus the dollar, we have not seen uh, the same kind of move that we saw in sterling. Uh, the high at 107.36 could also possibly be the peak for this round. And uh, if the market does decisively take out the support line here, and trade lower today, I think that will also give us uh, the credibility that the uh, the dollar is starting to rise and all the other major currencies are likely to fall back. Okay, and that is in line with the very bearish euro dollar outlook in the daily time frame. Okay, uh, let's go into crude oil. Crude oil actually pulls back a little bit. Uh, overnight, we can see the market has trading to a high of $77.75, just below this uh, minor resistance line. So the market obviously uh, uh, observing this technical outlook in terms of this uh, this uh, resistance line here. So yes, this I think it will be a temporary setback. Uh, of course, the risk of market taking taking out $17 still remains. Uh, there are some people who are saying maybe the market will only bottom up at $65 or $66. So that remains a possibility. But if technically the market takes out decisively this this resistance line there's hope that the market will next go up to 83 dollars and 34 cents if that being the case of course that will be very very setting a stage for a very bullish challenge of uh the november high of uh sorry the october high of 93 dollars and 74 cents i'm basically still long the you uh the crude oil uh, position these are the only two positions i have right now which is short s p 500 and long crude oil uh over in the uh 
gold market unfortunately very similar to my trade in the sterling and the euro dollar i was taken out of my short gold position uh during the night when the cpn numbers was released and yesterday we have a, a significant pullback and uh it's a little bit too late to sell at this current level now because uh, i think uh the risk reward does not look attractive anymore uh, i think the market is if we continue to trade downside okay the target immediately will be 1725 so i want to see some kind of reaction if the market eventually goes down to this level if i can get some kind of confirmation the market is bottoming out and then we can see a reversal pattern uh appears uh, let's say in the 60 minutes time frame i think that would be my cue to go back in again to buy gold okay but the one that i really really wanted to buy is silver and overnight we can see that silver picks up at 24 dollars and 13 cent not not on yesterday but uh at the uh on tuesday itself and uh, we can see that since Tuesday the market has not been able to go up to new high and uh, based on last night's pullback there is the possibility the market may go down to test the $22 again very similar to the $1,725 in the gold market if both comes to the same level uh, for silver will be twenty two dollars for for gold is seven one thousand seven twenty five if both come to this uh, these two levels simultaneously and then uh, 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 de develop a reversal pattern uh, in the candlestick then i would think that that will be the confirmation uh to perhaps go in to buy some silver because i thought the uh in my opinion the silver upside potential is a much much more than the uh potential for gold to actually uh go up because i think this move is going to be very explosive uh the fundamental behind is of course we have a bit of a short squeeze the whole market has been very very short uh in precious metal markets and uh i think Fundamentally, there is going to be huge demand for silver because most of the delivery we saw last month uh, end up uh, in silver. Uh, most uh, speculators uh, wanted to take delivery in silver from COMEX. And as I always mentioned, this, the, 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 the warehouse stocks in silver in COMEX is not very, very high. So I think if uh, more and more uh, speculators demand delivery, especially for the December 27 uh, option exploration, I think there is a very good chance we can see another squeeze uh, to the upside. Okay. Uh, Bitcoin also did not quite, uh, uh, okay, Bitcoin actually have a rally last night, but it has been handicapped by this support turn resistance line. You can see market went up to 18,375 and then basically cannot go much higher and it pulls back. So that this this line here is now currently setting the stage for a barrier to higher prices and the fact that market cannot uh uh, uh trade be, uh, above the eight uh, the 19000 levels uh, is already a sign uh, that this market top side is actually quite limited uh, unless the market can actually stays above 20000 and then stay above 22000 i think uh the case for lower prices in cryptos especially bitcoin uh, remains a, a very high possibility personally i think the medium to long term uh the bitcoin may actually go down to 12000 maybe as low as 10000 before it stabilizes so uh that being the case uh definitely buying long uh, going long at 18000 is definitely not a good bet okay over in Ethereum, we also saw the market also having problems to cross beyond the 1,350 levels convincingly. This round, the highest trader was 1,351. And then last night, it has a very, very main, uh, minor breach of this support line. Uh, it does not mean anything at this moment because it's very, very minor. I need to see a very, very sharp drop to tell me that this uh, market has already turned bearish. For the time being, I think there's still a possibility of $1,200 may can, can still hold. Okay, so we have to watch the development in this space here crypto uh ripple needless to say has been basically been sidelining uh it has not been able to find the motivation to go either higher or lower purely because there is this sec lawsuit hanging over his head and there is uh there's still no verdict everybody is waiting for a verdict some people were saying that we should get a verdict yesterday but again yesterday came and gone still nothing heard we're still waiting for some kind of uh news from this particular repo lab uh case whereby the sec uh is uh have a case against the repo lab saying that they are that their token is actually uh should be deemed as a securities and if that's the case that means it the ripple labs is infringement of the sec ruling so uh in the absence of any kind of development i think the market will simply drift and drift and drift to maybe the third to, to the 35 to 36 cents level okay so uh, i think this this range of prices remains a possibility that it can actually hit that binance coin will actually come under uh it's a victim of bad press uh because uh ever since the implosion of ftx there is this sudden uh, uh 
focus on crypto exchanges and Binance being the largest uh, now come under the spotlight from the Department of Justice in the US uh, saying that they have uh, or rather accusing them uh, of money laundering. So that is a, a very serious allegation and that has caused major, major withdrawal from the exchange to the tune of $2 billion uh, over this week itself and uh, uh, Binance has basically freezed okay uh the withdrawal of the this token called the usdc which is a stable coin so everything else uh being equal i think the risk is to the downside because uh if the just department of justice want to want to uh, uh rein in the crypto space i think they will definitely go after binance because now they are the only kingpin okay it's almost like a monopoly right now Dogecoin coins uh again has been drifting lower and lower ever since it trade up to 11 cents and uh, last we have seen is just under the 9 cents level and overall the structure looks still constructive i think it, it, it can still basically go up but uh again this is uh this is a main coin and uh, there is no fundamental behind it so we have to take it with a pinch of salt cardano has basically been uh, uh, uh living on borrowed time it has been you know have been uh, trading lower and lower we can see the lowest this one was just under 30 cents and the current level not is exactly 30 cents so there's a risk that it will break this 0 0.296 cents which is the low for november so going forward it does looks really really bad for Cardano. Uh, for Solana, uh, based on percentage term, it has actually gone, it has done quite well from as low as almost 11 cents, uh, $11 has gone up to $15. So in percentage term, that is quite a big move. Okay, but by and large, you can see the market is also flatlining and waiting for some kind of impetus. Uh, that's all I have for you for today and I would like to see you again on Sunday. If you can join me on my webinar on Sunday at 8 p.m. Singapore time. If not, then I will see you on Monday. In the meantime, take care and uh, enjoy your shopping for the Christmas season. Bye-bye.